Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, merciful and gentle. To you be praise and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world through the childbearing of Blessed Mary. Grant that we who have seen your glory may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is the Lord and Savior of all. Blessed be God forever, Lord Jesus, light of the world. Blessed is Gabriel, who brought good news. Blessed is Mary, your mother and ours. Bless your church preparing for Christmas, and bless us, your children, who long for your coming. Amen. People of God, prepare. God above all, maker of all, is one with us in Christ. Mona. Come, Lord Jesus. God, the mighty God, bends down in love to earth. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. God with us, God beside us, come soon to the world he has made. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. We are God's children. We seek the coming Christ. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. church on this wonderful beautiful advent four we're almost there the wait is almost over and now is the time for real patience blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be his kingdom now and forever amen almighty god unto you all hearts are open all desires known and from you no secrets are hid Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy. 
be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find us a mansion in us, a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more. As formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall read Canticle 3 in unison. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in his seat. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. The epistle is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writing is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring them about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reveal your 
ourself in virgin birth, the birth I changes all adore, a wondrous birth befitting God. From human will you do not spring, but from the Spirit of our God, of Word of God, come take our flesh and grow as child in Mary's womb. Holy Gospel of our Lord, the good news according to Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I am a virgin. The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from Mary. This is the gospel of our Lord. You came forth from the eternal God, and you returned in human flesh, and you suffered death. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I have always loved Mary's story. It resonated with me as a young boy and has captured me for most of my lifetime. And I think there's a lot that Mary says that all of us 
can really identify with. Today I'd like to look at just one phrase she says though that I think we all can connect with. How can this be? How can this be? We've now lost in our nation more dead to the virus than we lost in all of World War II. And soon it will eclipse all that we lost in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and all the last 20 years in the war in terrorism. In addition to the pandemic, many of you have felt the economic impact and loss of jobs, loss of association with those we love. And many, while well, they're dealing with all of this, are dealing with crippling diseases that they have no control over, just like we have no control over what's going on in our society today in many ways. How can this be? And maybe more importantly, the question should be, how do we move forward? You know, sometimes I've learned that to move forward, you have to go back. So I'm gonna take you back with me a little bit. Some of you know that in the 1960s, I dropped out of a seminary program and during the Vietnam War volunteered to serve in the infantry in the Marine Corps. That would lead me to 30 years ago being responsible for a very large Marine force that was getting ready to attack into Kuwait to liberate Kuwait from the Iraqi offensive. The commander of the overall theater, General Schwarzkopf, sent his deputy down, Marine general that I knew fairly well and served with several times. And he told us that the general expected that over 40% of my unit would end up either dead or wounded. I asked God, many times that night and just before we did attack, how can this be? Forty years ago, just south of Beirut International Airport, not far from the Israeli border, I was in a theater again and because the Israelis had gone into two Palestinian refugee camps in, in Lebanon and massacred hundreds of Palestinian refugees unarmed. We were sent in to provide a measure of protection for the people. Now this took place not far from where Hannah gave birth to Samuel, not far from where Samuel did most of his prophetic work, and in the same hometown that Mary grew up in. And I looked at the carnage, and once again I asked, how can this be? Fifty years ago, during the Vietnam War, while I served in several countries in Southeast Asia, and again was exposed to more carnage than I ever even want to remember, so many times I asked God, how can this be? Sometimes to go forward, you have to go back. I think that's what Mary did to move forward. You see, likely as a little girl, Mary grew up with the influence of Hannah and Samuel all the time. They were hometown, hometown heroes. Likely as a little girl, just like those children there, they sang Hannah's song and all the songs that are 
so important to their lives. And Hannah likely gave to Mary the outline and the model for the Magnificat you heard today that she used. Just as Samuel would then go and give King David God's covenant, a stack of promises that would seemingly be unbelievable to anyone. And of course, Mary knew that David fulfilled and God fulfilled, more importantly, all those promises to David. And she likely also clung to the words that we heard in Samuel today. You can't put God in a cedar box. We can't put God in any box. Because God seemingly is always going beyond the box. Outside of the box. To do remarkable things for God's people all people. And yet at the same time, I think it's important to remember that even though Mary was God's blessed and most favored, Mary suffered a whole lot. I'm sure that during the life and the ministry, clearly during the crucifixion and even the resurrection of our Lord, Mary had to say many times over and over again, Lord, how can this be? How can you do this to my child? And yet Mary found the capacity to move forward because Mary relied on God's word and God's spirit, not herself. Today, Again, I believe very strongly that sometimes to move forward, we also have to move back. And during this time, I wonder if it may not be critical that we go back to the basics of who we are and whose we are. Who are we? We're humans. <laughs> We get old, <laughs> we lose our hair, we lose our eyesight, we lose our hearing, mine are all gone. And then I'm losing my mind too. And at the same time, I know in spite of all that going on, I'm still a sinner. I make all kinds of mistakes every day. And yet, I know I'm God's. I know that in spite of everything that I continue to do wrong, everything that I seemingly can't do right enough, God is continually forgiving me, restoring me, and giving me the power of his Holy Spirit to keep on keeping on. And you know, when I go back at the very core of who I am, I believe so much in what happened in the waters of baptism. You all remember. You see it every time we have a baptism. In this sanctuary. Where God claims every single child. And gives that child a promise. That nothing they do the rest of their life. Can ever change. What God's doing for them to be claimed as a child of God. To be marked with the cross of Christ that stays with them eternally and to be given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And beyond that sacrament, I remember who we are in the Holy Sacrament. That each time we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we're not just forgiven, we're not just restored into good standing in the family. No, even more importantly than that, we have union with Christ. And we're made holy. A holy people. Just like Jesus, Mary was told, would be holy. And that reminds me of whose we are. 
the very end, all of us, we find out we're gods. And nothing we can do can ever separate us from that love of God. Nothing. God is constantly reaching out and pulling us back in. You see, regardless of how good or how bad or how indifferent we are, God does the impossible for us too. And God restores and saves us. And you might ask, how can this be? It can be because of the birth, life, ministry, death, and resurrection of the son Mary gives birth to, of Jesus Christ. Sometimes to go forward, we need to go back. And when we go back and we begin to see that Emmanuel, God has always been with us, even if we didn't know it. And God has not only always been with us, but God always will be with us. As you see, you, each and every one of you, are God's favored ones. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. 
give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're following along in your prayer book, please turn to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also peace be with you. Peace. It's wonderful to be here on this fourth Sunday in Advent, and we thank Pastor John for his wonderful words of wisdom and insight. Mary is indeed an admirable figure. Today, tonight, don't forget we have Compline followed by story time. And like I told you last week, I couldn't decide on the book to read, so you're going to get two books this afternoon. So join us at 7 for Compline 715 for story time. And then Thursday, believe it or not, it's finally here. Thursday, we will have our Christmas Eve service, which will be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We will have a pageant that will be streamed in, so you'll be able to see a lot of your fellow congregants, and we'll be able to do the pageant in a little different way than probably it's ever been done before. And God willing, we won't have to do this uh, this way ever again. And then we will have uh, some quiet time with Silent Night at the end of the service. And then we will have drive through communion around 3 o'clock, maybe a little after. So please come and join us. We look forward to seeing you then and experiencing in our hearts the birth of Jesus. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting light, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all else, the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his people and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Joseph, the blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Andrew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now 
and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Please join me in saying the prayer for receiving spiritual communion. In union, O oh Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And, so, and since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Continuing with the post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. May you become everything that God created you to be. As you rejoice in that creation, may you feel peace in your soul and love in your heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those for whom you pray this day and always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Somebody told me that those wise men had come back into the church and they were even closer. Shall we go see if we can find them? There's the church. Lots going on. Hmm. Oh, wait. Look down here. What do we see? There they are. They're very close to the front. I wonder where they'll be on Thursday. Come back and see. Blessings. <laughs> 